Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So we'll take up uh, another few uh, interview questions. So next uh, important question, uh, which was actually asked to one of my students, uh, he had told me that this question was asked to him in the interview. Why black cotton soil are unsuitable for the foundation, right? We always seen that uh, we don't use black cotton soil when we do the backfilling. Of course, when you get the when you may see if you have a black cotton soil, we can do the excavation. Okay. Uh, but again, you have to do certain remedies and all uh, if you're not if you're not getting a very hard straight up because right. But but for backfilling, once you do the foundation, you're going to do the back, you're, you're going to do the backfilling, right? But for that, we should not use the black cotton soil, right? So we'll see what is the reason behind that. So black cotton soils are good for agriculture purpose and not good for the construction because if you had seen um, the cotton, you have seen the uh, how the cotton is grown, right? Cotton is grown on the black cotton soil, right? So that is that is where the black cotton soil is of much importance and not in the construction industry okay so the characteristics of a black cotton soil is it, it will absorb a lot of water and when exposed to the sunlight it's going to swell so uh, because uh, now what is the, what is the significance of this because uh, when during the like when the cotton is you know actually sown uh, it, it requires a lot of water right so which soil you are going to use you are going to use black cotton soil because it will absorb a lot of water right so that is how the cotton is actually grown. It requires a lot of water. So this black cotton soil will help in retaining that water. But for the construction, it is not a good soil. This swelling is shrinking and is not ideal for the foundation. So we don't use it. So that is uh, the swelling and the shr uh, shrinking is going to happen. So we don't use this in the foundation. So the black cotton soil contains sw swell and shrink properties that it is going to swell. It is going to swell and then it's going to shrink. Swell in the sense volume is going to increase shrinkage in the, in the sense the volume is going to decrease due to the shrinkage and swelling a difference in the volume of soil occurs which formulates the cracks in the foundations or building structural system the cracks are reducing the durability and the strength of the structure and greatly uh, the cases of the failure of a structure occur due to the cracks. see i have given a very uh, big explanation all these things are not required when somebody asks you this question you can say uh, you can tell this particular point that black cotton soil is uh, good for the agriculture and not for the construction. The reason behind that is uh, it will absorb a lot of water, which is called as uh, swelling. And then it's uh, and then uh, at the time of sunlight, it's going to shrink. That means it's going to release all the water which has been stored. And then what will happen? The volume is going to come down, which is called a shrinkage. So if you use these two words, that is swelling and uh, shrinkage. So uh, the interview understand that you know the concept behind that. The other thing for your understanding, I have given it. If you want, you can remember else not required. Only the first two points are enough for us. Okay. Yeah. So again, other than that, I've added another few points just to concentrate on this. In the rainy season, black cotton soil swells due to higher percentage of the clay. So actually what happens now, let us say you're done the backfilling or something like this. And at, it's a time of a rainy season. So once the rain comes, all your, the soil, what you have, no black cotton soil, it will absorb a lot of water. It's going to retain all the water into that. Why is that? Because it has higher percentage of the clay and it swells during the rainy season, right? It is going to swell. That is volume is going to increase during the rainy season. And once it's a summer season, what will happen due to the summer, due to the sunlight, whatever water was there, no, it's going to give away. That means all the water gets operated. The moment all the water gets operated, what will happen? There is an increase in the volume initially due to the sunlight. All the water got operated. There's a decrease in the volume. So decrease in the volume is called as shrinkage. So this swelling and shrinkage both are going to happen so that is why the cracks are going to happen so that is why we don't use uh, black cotton soil in the construction okay that's it rest all things you just can go through this but it's not required this point is very important for us you can give this example uh, at the time of rainy season uh, you can say it will absorb a lot of water because it will have a, a mineral called mont morino light so because of that mineral uh, which is present in the clay it is going to absorb a lot of water now we don't have an issue if it absorbs a lot of water, but at the time of summer, it is going to give up all that water, which has been stored into that. So due to this nature, uh, the cracks are going to form in the structure. So we avoid using the uh, black cotton soil. You can see it here. See, so this was at the time of, uh, I think, yeah, this was at the time of when the, when the rain came. Okay. You see how it is, uh, right. Everywhere there's a crack. And once at the time of sunlight, right. All the water got evaporated. Again, there's a crack in the soil. So if the crack happens in the soil, 
because ultimately your load is going to go to the soil only if a soil itself is going to crack and all then obviously what will happen there will be a settlement in the foundation if there is a settlement in a foundation again what will happen cracks are going to form so that is why we don't use the black cotton soil very simple explanations you can give okay great now another question basic questions what they can ask is what are the field tests which is performed on the site for the materials they can ask you like uh, tell me what all tests you are going to perform if you're working as a site engineer uh, when the raw material comes now what are the raw materials or what are the materials which is going to come to the site cement is one steel is another fine aggregate coarse aggregate then other than that yeah other than that we have uh, tiles then again let us say water bricks and block you can give all this example you can see cement sand aggregate then you can say tiles uh, then we have water uh, then we can say steel got it now what are the tests you are going to do see cement i've already told you that once the cement comes to the side we'll put a hand into that you'll see whether it, there is a lumps in the cement or not right then also you're going to rub in between the i mean you're going to take a pinch of cement and rub it in between your finger so if you're feeling it smooth that means it is good good quality of a cement if there is some kind of a roughness then we can say it has been adulterated with some uh, fly ash or other material got it other than that i told you many other tests what you can do on the cement right you can do the heating of a cement where you are going to check whether the cement has been adulterated or not so that is those tests if you remember you can put it here then coming to the this bricks and block bricks and block i'll tell you later what are the different tests you do on bricks and block okay now coming to the uh, steel one say so steel what test we do is in the site usually we don't do the test on the steel uh, we go to a third party uh, where they have certain equipments and other uh, instruments with them where they can do the test on the steel steel in the sense the rebar reinforcement bar you are going to uh, check the tensile strength of that because let us say you ordered fe 500 so 500 newton per mm square is the yield stress of that particular rebar now you need to verify it right, whether exactly 500 is coming or not so you are going to do that elongation test on that okay uh, so you have to go to the third party lab those people will do and they'll give a report saying that okay this is the strength what we are getting then you are going to check the carbon content right because carbon content is also very important because if there is too much carbon content, what will happen? The strength is going to increase, but the ductility is going to come down, right? So that is also important. We are going to do the carbon um, testing on the uh, rebar. We are going to check the uh, strength of that. Then al along with that, you can do the elongation uh, test on that. Yeah, because once you pull the bar, we want to see what is the maximum elongation it's going to happen. So these are the three different uh, tests you can do. I mean, basic test that you can remember. Other than that, uh, people do lot of lot other tests also. You will try to check the chemical compositions and all. But now for your level, for the interview level, you can say, uh, I know these are the three tests what we do. Maybe there are any um, many other tests, many other tests. But this is three what I remember, right? Very simple answer you can give. Now, other than that, for the tiles, for the tiles what we do, in the tiles we do water absorption test water absorption test that means you will bring the you will take the you will take the tiles you're going to uh, immerse that in the water for 24 hours after 24 hours you will take it out and then you're going to check you're going to do the water absorption water absorption in the sense before you put it in the water you're going to do the you're going to weigh that and once it is immersed in water then you're going to weigh it again the difference of that there is certain limit to that if it exceeds beyond that then we are not going to use that uh, tiles so that is a water absorption then second is that you can check the size of tiles like you will take a 20 number of tiles let us say you take will take 20 numbers of tiles and you will keep it one above the other and you will see whether the length and the breadth is same or not whether there is deviation or not so that is another test what we can do right so these are the two tests what you can remember and say these are tiles what these are the test what we do on the tiles other than that for the water of course for the water what all you remember we have to check the ph of the water right then you can check for the organic uh, which i told in the initial lectures right if you remember ph organic organic matter then suspended matters and all those things test we are supposed to do we can remember the ph test we are going to do uh, and we know uh, we have a ph scale of uh, 0 to 14 where 0 to 6 is your uh, acidic and from uh, 8 to 14 it is uh, alkaline 7 is called as neutral right and always the water which is good for drinking the same water we use for the uh, concreting work so if you tell all these things the interviewer knows that you have certain basic understanding and that is enough right they will not ask you uh, very deep questions and all unless you are applying for the quality control role and all but since we are uh, looking for a fresh uh, graduates or since this course is made for someone who is looking to get into the industry uh, this much answer is sufficient and it is more than enough right
So other than that, uh, test I have finished the steel one. Tiles I've explained you. Water is explained. Cement already we have done. Brick and block anyhow. I'll uh, take it in the later part. Okay, where I'll be explaining you about the bricks and the block. Uh, we have uh, three, four different tests. What we can do on the site to check the uh, quality of the bricks. We'll try to see that. Great. Yeah. Other than that, uh, they may ask you what are the full form of this TMT, AAC, and uh, TMX bar. Just remember, TMT is thermomechanically treated bar. We had mild steel. After the mild steel, we have TMT. Then we, uh, we have HYSD. Then we have TMT, TMX, and all. So I've written it here. TMT stands for thermomechanically treated bar. Then we have TMX. So this is a Thermax treatment. What it's a German technology what we use. So it is called as Thermax treatment. Uh, usually they ask for TMT. TMX usually they don't ask. Then we have TOR. TOR stands for twisted or reinforcement. Then the full form of AAC is called as autoclave aerated concrete. And CLC is a cellular lightweight concrete. So is, we have seen the bricks, right? And nowadays we get the cement uh, blocks also. Other than that, but the problem with the cement block is it's quite heavy since it is made up of uh, concrete. I mean, it is made up of cement and uh, smaller uh, coarse aggregate. So in the AC and the CLC block, they are big in size, but the unit weight is very less. One person can lift two or three blocks at once, right? So that is the advantage of using AC and the CLC block. Uh, nowadays, most of the commercial projects, people are trying to use this so that the dead load of your structure is going to come down. Yeah, they may ask you one question. Why is that we are using AAC and CLC block uh, and not the cement blocks nowadays? You can tell this thing. Uh, ultimately, uh, the dead load of our structure should come down, right? So this brick, if you do the, if you make use of cement block, what will happen? The cement block dead weight itself is more. That is a unit weight is more. So dead load will be more. In AAC and CLC block, the unit weight of this block itself is less. To put it in a better way, see, now let us say the cement uh, concrete block, what we have, no? Uh, I don't know exactly what is the unit weight. Let me say it is 20 kilonewton per cubic meter unit weight, unit weight of that. Whereas your CLC and uh, this one, that is a AAC block. Uh, I don't know exactly what is the unit weight. Let us say it is somewhere close to 8 to 12 kilonewton per cubic meter. I'll verify this and uh, explain you in the next lecture. What is the exact weight of CLC and uh, AAC? Okay. Now what has happened? Your unit weight from 20, it has got reduced to 8 to 12. Let us say 12. So what has happened? The dead load on the structure will come down. If the dead load on the structure is coming down, what will happen? The reinforcement requirement, everything will come down, right? So that is the advantage of using the AAC and CLC block. Second advantage is a fast construction because one person can lift two to three blocks at a time. So he can carry it and the mason also can quickly pick it and keep it and he can do the masonry work. In cement concrete, what will happen since it is heavy, it will take long time. Again, uh, from... Uh, uh, com project completion point of view also CLC and AAC block are very good. You can tell this two point. Okay. But cost wise, it comes out to be same because of course, AAC and CLC block are a bit expensive. Uh, the cost of one brick is somewhere close. One block is somewhere close to, you know, 60 to 85, 90 rupees, depend on the brand and depend on the size also. Whereas your uh, cement concrete block, you get it for like, you know, uh, 25, 30, 32 rupees in the market. But again, uh, cost is not always important. It, it, it again depends what is the uh, uh, completion time you're going to take, right? So if by using uh, this block, what is that? Cement concrete block. Uh, if you're finishing the project in eight months and by using AAC and CLC, if you're finishing the project in six months, you have a time, you have a time uh, saving of around two months. So that means within two months before the, I mean, uh, within two months, you can put your project into use. So that uh, people, those who want to come and stay in your commercial projects and all, you get money from them, right? So that is how all those things are calculated. So again, uh, I, I, yeah, another important thing is that, of course, in cement block also, the size is 200 mm. Here also you can give 200 mm, no issues in that, okay? Uh, whereas in the brick, in brick, what will happen? I'll tell you one more thing. See, whatever you can remember, you can remember, okay? The brick, what is the brick size? That is the width of the brick. It is nine inches, okay? So nine inches comes out to be 230 mm. Whereas this blocks, whatever I'm speaking, no, they all are like eight inches block. They all are eight inches block, which comes out to be 200 mm. So what will happen since uh, the size of your block is less, you're going to get more carpet area. More carpet area means uh, what will happen? You'll get more area uh, so that, uh, uh, I mean, you can utilize it. Otherwise, what will happen? Nine inches, nine inch itself has gone in the brickwork. You cannot utilize that part. So this is another advantage of using the CLC, uh, AAC, or even the cement concrete block in comparison to the brickwork. Okay. Brickwork, it's a nine inch. 
whereas this is eight inch. So what has happened that um, uh, wall thickness will come down. If wall thickness will come down, then carpet area will be more. So people also look into this part also. So most of the commercial project they are using uh, uh, this thing. What is that? Uh, AAC, CLC, and the cement concrete. Okay. So I told you the difference between cement, uh, cement block, and AAC and CLC. Also, I compare that with the brickwork. Okay. But for normal small structure and all, we usually go with the brickwork. And it is okay for us since it's a small G plus one building. That cost difference won't be too much. Okay, great. Yeah. Along with that, there is one more uh, thing what I need to tell. Another bar what we have is the HYSD bar. HYSD bar, which is called for I mean, which is called as high yield strength, high yield strength deformed bars. Okay, high yield strength deformed bars. Got it. Great. So we have a TMT. We have HYSD high yield. It is high yield strength deform bar. Right? Yeah. I hope up to your concepts are clear. We are able to understand most of the things. Just go through my lecture once again. Maybe I told you lot of things, but try to make your own notes and try to understand this concept. It's very simple. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.